now tuned in to the high vibration of the Free Your Energy Podcast. Podcast. Welcome back to the Free Your Energy Podcast. And for the next 25 minutes, you will be tuning in to a high frequency, to a high vibration. So leave your baggage at the door. Leave yesterday at the door. Get present. Come to the moment. I'm your host, Sylvester McNutt the third. I'm the best-selling author of nine books with a 10th one on the way this summer called Live the Life You Deserve. My mission is to help people free their energy, to free thoughts, to get people out of their old story, to get people out of their wounds, to get people out of yesterday, and to get us into our moment, to get us into our truth, into our dharma, into our passion, to get us into our habits and our mindsets that will give us the life that we want. We're doing a a special solo episode. I haven't recorded a special solo episode in quite some time. I have been locked in to being a father, to writing a book, to bettering myself. And what had to happen for me is I had to put my, my content aside. Okay. So the first topic today is creating from a place of abundance. Uh, I've been creating content online for over 14 years now uh, as a writer, as a speaker. And one of the things that's important for me is to always move from a place of abundance, you know, making sure that I'm not moving from a place of scarcity. When you move from scarcity, you you create because of the, the vibrational energy of scarcity, you're creating more scarce environments. You are creating lack. You're creating not enough. You're creating anxiety because you're creating you're creating from a place of I'm not worthy. I'm not enough. What I'm doing is not enough. What I'm doing won't make an impact. What I'm doing is not important. Nobody cares. Right. And that's the that's the energy of not enough. That's the energy of insecurity. That's the energy of scarcity. I can't create from there. I don't live there. That's not my mindset. That is not my energy. So my energy is abundance. My my energy is that there's enough money for me. There's enough food for me. There's enough opportunity for me. All I all I have to do is get in my phone and I can I can make money. All I have to do is get on the phone and call someone and I can be inside of a genuine relationship. All I have to do is go outside and I can feel the sun and the wind. I can go down the street and go to a grocery store and get any type of food that I want. To me, that is a life of of luxury. And I know those are simple things, but to me, that is a life of luxury. That is a life of abundance. I live in a life of abundance. Uh, I felt a little overwhelmed with writing a book, having my kid, uh, moving, right? And then just managing my, my company. It was too much. Writing a book is hard. It was too much. Trying to be present as a father is hard. It was, it was, it was too much. And so I said to myself, okay. Because we live in abundance mindset, what are some of the things that I can reduce in my life so I can have more capacity for for these few things? And and that's the pendulum of life. Like you don't always just have energy. Everything isn't always working perfectly. Part of the pendulum of life is that you have to understand when certain pieces of your life need to get sacrificed so other pieces of your life can thrive. There are moments where you have enough energy, you have enough time for everything to get the best. But then there's times where it's like, no, I don't have, I don't have that. So let me be mindful of where I'm putting my energy. And so I made a, I made a conscious decision. I said, Hey, because I live in abundance, I know that if I pause recording the video podcast, if I pause it, I know that when I come back to it, not only am I going to come back refreshed, but I'm going to come back with better energy. The people listening or watching will get better energy. And in turn, the consequence of that is that that will multiply some aspect of their life versus the idea of, okay, I'm going to live in scarcity. The more that I create, the more money that I make. And since I'm in a scarcity mindset, I have to create content in order to make money. And if I stop creating content, I will stop making money. That's how a lot of people live with content. Uh, when you're when you're making content for a living, I can't do that. I can't do that. My mindset has to be for me. My mindset is I have to create quality content. I have to go at the pace that is organic for me. I have to create genuinely from a place that's within my heart. And I cannot be concerned about algorithms. I create at the pace that works for me because I want to make sure that my that my content is authentic and that it has a vibration and that it has a heart and that it has a soul and that it's not it's not I'm just making it just to be seen or just to be heard. 
right? And so just think about that for a second and now think about it as it portrays to your life. How are you creating? Are you creating your life from the energy of, I have enough, I am enough, I'm doing enough, abundance? Or are you creating your life from the energy of scarcity, lack, fear, right? And just, just think about that for a second. That's something to really sit with. Like, how, how am I showing up in my energy, right? And, and, and so the question, I guess, for anybody who's in that scarcity mindset is like, okay, well, what is, the, what is the first step? People always ask me, like, what's the first step? Well, I would say the first step is making that, that, that declaration, Right. And being being for real about it, like, hey, this will not go on anymore. I will not create. From a place of scarcity, I can no longer afford the the stress um, or the energy of being in scarcity. And so it's just to make that that declaration. And once you make that demarcation point in life, a demarcation point is like a clean separation. Once you make that clean separation of I am no longer living in scarcity. The crazy thing that happens is once you make the choice to live in abundance, the universe around you, the energy around you, the people around you, they start to see that abundance and they're like, whoa, OK, that person's moving different. And, 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 and look, sometimes people can't recognize it because they're so far into their wounds or they're so far into their fear or they're so far into not enough that they can't recognize a shift in other people. But that's none of your business. That has nothing to do with you. If you consciously make the choice of, hey, I want to free my energy. I want to be a deliberate creator of my life. I want to live the life that I deserve. Once you consciously say those words and make those declarations and, and make that demarcation in your life, what will happen is some people will adjust. They will see it and they'll rock with you and they'll support you and they'll encourage you on your journey. And some people will be so far into their wounds and into their pain that they might become haters. They might become resistant to what you're doing. But what you have to understand is that is none of your business. Your business is your choice to live in abundance. That is your business. How other people perceive you is not your business. It does not matter if they give you approval. It does not matter if they give you support. It does not matter if they are your best friend. It doesn't matter if it's your mom. It doesn't matter who it is. If they're not in alignment with the new energy that you're creating, I'm not about to tell you to get rid of them because we're not, let's, let's be realistic and practical. You're, we're not getting rid of these people. But what we do have to do is we do have to draw those clear and distinct boundaries to let them know that you will not disrupt my energy. Say this with me. You will not disrupt my energy. I said, say it with me. You will not disrupt my energy. All right. Now, you don't have to say that to them. Right. You don't have to get on that pedestal, but you do have to get on that pedestal for your own energy. And you have to say, I will not allow these people to disrupt my energy because I'm choosing to live in a place of abundance. I'm choosing to create and design my life from a place of abundance. There is enough opportunity for me. There is enough money for me. There is enough food for me. Whatever it is, there's, there is enough women for me. There is enough men for me. There is enough music for me. There is enough sunsets for me. There is enough sunrises for me. There is enough opportunities to go for a walk. Whatever it is for your life, you fill in the blank. There, there, there are enough moments for me to play with my son. There are enough moments for me to play with my daughter. There are enough moments for me to make love to my wife. There are enough moments for me to be romantic with my husband. Whatever it is. You have to make that declaration and you cannot wait for approval from friends or family or social or me or, or, or anyone else. It's your life. Let's move to the topic of giving yourself time off. I believe that I was able to give myself time off because I do have an abundance mindset. I don't feel, um, what do people call it? FOMO. I don't feel like I'm missing out. If, if I can't make the party, hey, y'all have fun. I wish you love. If I can't make the, the trip, hey, y'all have fun. I can't make the, the, the session, hey, y'all have fun. I'm sending you love. Right? I don't, I don't experience FOMO. I never, I, I never feel like I'm missing out. Part of the reason why I never feel like I'm missing out is because I, I, I mean, I have a great life. I've always had a great life. Even when I was in, deep in my wounds and struggling and suffering, I mean, I've always had a great life. I've always had good food. I've always had uh, attention from good people. I've always had community. I've always had uh, access. You know, even if I wasn't rich, I, I always had access to 
an opportunity to work, to find a passion. Like I've always had a good life. I feel like that. I truly feel like that. And I feel like it's a perspective thing. I feel like it's a mindset thing. I feel like I've always, always have had a good life. That's something I'm really grateful for. Um, you know, I grew up with both of my parents and, you know, they were hard. They were hard on me, but they were teachers and they taught me a lot about life. Um, you know, how to show up for myself, how to find my voice. You know, my dad taught me how to fight because kids, you know, back in the day, we used to fight each other and I've had a great life, you know? And so when I wanted to give myself time off, you know, I became a full-time writer back in 2012. I started doing YouTube back in 2011. I started doing my podcast back in 2018. Uh, you know, I've written nine books. I've spoken over 55 different cities. I've coached thousands of people. I've had thousands of students come through my courses. I've had millions of people read my books. And you you almost develop this, you almost develop this, I could say it like that. Yeah, I was thinking if I wanted to say it like that. You almost develop this toxic relationship with social media when you're a creator where you feel like you have to um, put content out. And, and now, if you don't know this, uh, the more, oftentimes, the more content you put out, oftentimes, it's the more money you'll make, uh, whether that's directly from the ads or directly from uh, you selling your products and different things, or, it, it, you know, just people see you and they're like, okay, I want to go buy something from them, whether it's coaching or a book um, or a course. And this, this applies to all industries. I mean, if you're if you're just watching a, a channel, watching a, a a show, and you hear one of your favorite musicians' song, you might go pull up that song like, oh, I haven't heard this. This is my song. And then they just made, you know, some pennies off of you or whatever it is. Um, and so there's this dichotomy of the money story that we all have, right? And so when you grow up or when you're growing into your business, there is some scarcity at the at the start where it's like, if I don't do this, it's going to fail. If I don't show up, it's going to fail. Um, and you hear things like, oh, after the first five years, all businesses fail, right? Like you hear these uh, fear mongering based phrases and they get into your psyche and you believe them. The work for me was to realize that when my money story, my money story is one of abundance. That's my money story. And so I had to accept that those pieces of me that were used to scarcity or that were in fear, I had to accept that those were the child versions of me and that the adult integrated version of me lives fully in abundance. Uh-oh, light bulb, light bulb. Think about it now. So it's possible that for you, the child version of you uh, can have like a, a scarcity mindset when it comes to money or opportunity or dating or whatever it may be. But what you have to realize is that the adult integrated version of you uh there's no space for scarcity in the adult integrated version of you and there's no space for it for that right and you have to believe that and you have to accept that and so what we do with that information is we integrate that hey you give yourself time off because you won't miss out you won't miss out you know and so i gave myself time off i gave myself that permission to give myself time off. I think that's a great thing as well, because so many people these days, they just talk and talk and talk and talk, and they actually won't shut the up. Like, why won't you guys learn? Why won't you, you know, actually think about the things that you're saying? You know, I took so much time to like really consume and listen to what people were saying. And it was four years of nonsense. What are y'all talking about? What are y'all really talking about? So that brings me to my next point, abundance mindset. Part of the reason why I wanted to get back on my podcast, back on YouTube, uh, is because I believe in abundance. I believe in what I'm doing. I believe in my mission. And because I did observe for four years that people are out here just talking about nonsense. What are you talking about? And because I believe in abundance, I believe that voices like mine need to be out here. I truly believe that. Now, that does not come from some ego or God complex. It doesn't come from a, I'm better than. It just comes from, I know my value. I know my worth. I know my work. I know what I'm doing. And I know, and, and, and I know that I have uh, some intelligence and I know that I have some charisma and I know that that combination can impact another person's life in a positive way. And so let's talk about the abundance mindset. If you're 
struggling, you're teeter tottering between that childlike scarcity that we were naming and then integrating into the adult that is full, that uh, is more of an abundance. I want you to play the the teeter totter game. Okay. And so the teeter totter is if you push something down over here, if you push this lever, that lever goes up. Or if you push this lever down, that lever goes up. Teeter totter. Okay. And so I want you to think about your life and think about like, okay, where if I if I push something down, where is my life going to go up? So for example, if I put down alcohol my body fat percentage would decrease and as a consequence my confidence would go up the the consequence of my confidence going up is and this is i'm making this up for your life maybe you make more money maybe you attract better partners or better dating mates uh maybe you're just happier right so think about it this way if i if i put something down what goes up so if i sacrifice if i let go if i release something what goes up for me so when we're talking about abundance, if I put down the mindset that there's not enough, what will go up for me is the mindset that there is enough. If I put down the, the mindset that there is not enough opportunity, the only other thing to fill my brain with is the idea that there is enough. And so people can debate on how much opportunity there, there is. Sure, you can debate that. But what I can guarantee you is that what you believe, whatever you choose to believe will be true for you. Whatever you choose to believe will be true for you. So if you believe, well, there's not enough of this, that will be true. You, you will be self-affirming that reality of there's not enough. If you believe there is enough and it's for me and I deserve it and it's my time, there will be opportunity for you. There will be advancement for you. There will be wealth for you. There will be love for you. And so with abundance, we have to remember that this is truly a choice. It's what you want to choose to believe. Do you want to choose to believe that there is enough? It's your choice. Do you want to believe that there's not enough and that there's lack? Is this a black and white thing? It can be. Is it a nuanced thing? It can be. It could be what you want. What I want to believe is that there is enough for me and that I will thrive. And that even when I have struggles, I will find solutions. That's what I want to believe. Uh, let's move to something personal. My mom came out here. This was a big deal for me. My mom hadn't been out to uh, Arizona where I live. She hasn't been here since I moved here. Uh, let's see. That was about 12 years ago I moved here. And we were able to get her out here, uh, flew her out, put her in the house, got her a really nice, nice room here in my house. And it was it was a moment that really touched my soul because she was here for my son for his birthday. But she was also here for herself to see to see me. Um, and she was also, and, and it was also for me to see hers. So, uh, I feel so full from it. I feel so, so grateful. My father passed in 2014 and I just feel very grateful that I can still spend time with my mom and that we can still, you know, work on our relationship and just get to know each other. And if you're, you know, if you're at all struggling with the relationship with your parents, I mean, I really only have two things for you. One is to understand that they won't always be here, right? And so there is that recognition of death that is upon all of us to, you know, just accept that people die. And, and, and so what do we do with that information that people die? I mean, do you want to continue to hold grudges? Do you want to continue to hold them to standards that they can't reach? Do you want to um, continue to be mad about what they didn't do or what they did do when you were eight? You know, you're 42 now, you're 52 now, you're, you're 38 now. You're 27 now and I, I get and I want to validate your experience as a kid. But at the same time, I, I'm more concerned with you freeing your energy and being an integrated adult. And I'm more concerned with you having a relationship with your parents now. All right. And that's the first thing. The second thing I have for you is get to know who your parents are. 
for the individual that they are. You are not perfect. You make mistakes. You mess up. You have hurt people too. You have wronged people. You have been the shady one. You have been uh, the one that caused pain too. What, what God complex are you sitting on that you are the perfect human being that you just get to judge your parents for everything they didn't do while not giving them credit for what they did do? Again, I don't know your story. I, I want to be sensitive to your pain and to your trauma, to your wound, or to your to to what you went through. And I want to acknowledge it. I do. I 100 percent want to acknowledge it. But I also want to call you forward. That's my job. That's what I do. I'm calling you forward. If your parents are still alive, call them. Get to know them, who they are in this moment. You know, and that's one thing that really helped heal my relationship with my mom is I stopped making everything about my story with her. And I started to allow her to have her own story. And that's one of the ways we can heal our relationships with our parents is just to give them the agency in the space to be themselves, to be an individual. Yes, you have the responsibility of being my parent, but for God's sake, who are you? Ask them, what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite food? Ask them. What's something that you remember from your childhood? What's something that impacted you in a positive way? What's something that impacted you in a negative way? Stop making everything about your parents, about you. Give them the agency to be a human being. Hey, how did you, how did you meet my dad? How did you meet my mom? How did you, you know, how did you guys fall in love? What was it like dating without cell phones? What was it like dating without talent? Like be inquisitive about your parents. That's one of the best ways you can heal your relationship with them. Get to know who they are. And then, you know, stop judging them. You got to stop judging your parents so much. You have to stop. One of the best ways to heal your relationship with your parents is just to see them as an individual. And what people do so much is that we judge our parents so much on what they didn't do. And that comes from lack. That is your own lack. You don't know. You don't even know the sacrifices that your parents had to put forth for you to even be here. Again, I don't know your story. You may say that this person didn't do this and this person didn't do that. I get it. But how, how long do we do that? Like if you're, if you're going into your thirties, how, how much longer are you going to do that? If you're going into your forties, how much longer are you going to do that? If you're going into your fifties, how much longer are you going to do that? If your parents are still alive, it is your duty to, show up as an integrated adult and heal the relationship. I'm not saying that they're not responsible for their participation or, or the pain that they cause or their the problems that they cause. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying is that there's a pathway for a lot of us, maybe not all of us, but there's a pathway for a lot of us to have different relationships that exist in abundance and healing um, versus like the I'm mad at you, you owe me, the very like adolescent relationships. Okay, I'm going to end with uh, two quotes. Today, uh, I was reading the Gene Keys, uh, and as I was just thinking about me taking time off to give myself some freshness, that's actually the first Gene Key um, in this book called The Gene Keys is, is freshness. And so there's this quote that says, uh, the, gift, the gift of freshness relies on one immortal truth. Creativity can never be controlled. It simply comes when it comes. And when it is absent, there is nothing for you to do but wait and relax. And I really love that quote because it just it just gave me permission to understand that because I'm creating from a place of abundance, it's okay if I wait, it's okay if I relax, because I know that when I'm not, I'm charged, I'm creating, I'm focused, I'm forward. And just that permission to just wait and relax and to allow the creativity to come to me and to flow through me. Uh, I feel like that creates an authentic vibe, right? Like, I, I hope that when you're watching this or you're listening, I hope that you can get authenticity. I have nothing to prove to you. I have nothing to fake. Like, I don't care if you don't like me. This is, I'm not doing this for any personal reason other than what's flowing through me and through my soul. And it is my duty to create and it is my duty to share. And I hope that you take that for your life. The other reading I'm going to read is actually from my book. My book is called Care Package, Care Package, Harnessing the Power of Self-Compassion to Heal and Thrive. Uh, this is page 99. I really love this one. It says, I hurt myself by breaking my back for others, by giving when nothing was coming back. I've decided that the people who 
used to use me have to be cut off or understand that I have changed. The old me died yesterday and I have gone through a rebirth today. Don't say you know me until you get to know the new me as if today you just knew me. And I feel like for anybody who goes through a change, that's one of the things that you have to recognize is that the other people around you may not recognize your change. And so as you're moving through maybe a weight loss journey or a muscle gain journey or a flexibility journal journey, or as you're moving through maybe a financial journey, or maybe as you're releasing pain and healing wounds, or maybe you're going through the journey of upgrading your money mindset, getting out of scarcity and getting into abundance, or maybe you're going through the journey of maybe you don't want to be a player anymore. You want to do, do something serious, or maybe you did something serious and you want to have fun. Whatever journey you're on, it is your journey. Take full ownership of your journey. You don't need permission from other people to say, hey, this is my journey. Do you, can you can you can you give me approval? You don't need anybody's permission. And the old you is not you now. So give yourself permission to let go. Give yourself permission to reinvent yourself. Give yourself permission to be authentic with who you are now. What you did 10 years ago is what you did 10 years ago. Who you were 15 years ago is who you were 15 years ago. Free your energy means to free yourself and, and to be present in this moment. I'm free of who I was. You are free of who you were. And in this moment, who do you want to be? Who do you want to create? What type of life do you want to create? What type of life do you want to live? This is the Free Your Energy podcast. My name is Sylvester McNutt the third. Thank you so much for tapping in with me. I hope that the t today's frequency was high for you. I hope that you got something from this. Uh, if you want to tap in with my books, just go on Amazon, type my name, Sylvester McNutt the third. If you want to tap in with me as your coach, go to SylvesterMcNutt.net slash apply for coaching. And you can apply to hire me to be your coach. I would love to support you. I do have a group community coaching called Mastery Circle. You can find that if you just type my name, Sylvester McNutt III, Mastery Circle. We meet every two weeks, every two Saturdays, uh, and it's fire. The community is fire. I get in there every two weeks, and I'm leading, I'm teaching, I'm bringing the energy, and so that's a fire way to connect with me. With that being said, this is the Free Your Energy podcast. So if you're watching on YouTube, drop a comment. Let me know what you thought about today's video. If you're listening on Apple Music or Spotify, I would love if you could just leave a review. Let the people know that you're loving the energy over here. And I'll catch you next week on next week's episode of the Free Your Energy podcast. You're now tuned in to the high vibration of the Free Your Energy podcast. podcast. podcast.